If you're trying to figure out the first outlet or the first receptacle on a circuit, it can be a little bit confusing, especially if you're doing it in a finished area. Now, if you're doing this in an unfinished area, like say an unfinished basement, for example, it's a really straightforward process. All you have to do is go to your electrical panel and then on that circuit, trace the wire from that panel to the first receptacle. Then you'll know everything after that receptacle is considered downstream of that one. So if you're wanting to do something like troubleshoot or install a GFCI receptacle to protect all the other receptacles on that circuit, then you can do that pretty easily. But if you're doing it in a finished area, like say a kitchen, for example, it can be a little bit more confusing because you can't see the wires inside the walls. So let me take you through a process that you can use in order to figure this out. First, I wanna illustrate what should happen to downstream receptacles once you cut off the power to an upstream one. So I'm gonna use this GFCI receptacle here in this kitchen as an example. So you can see there's a GFCI receptacle behind me. And then if we pan here, you can see there's another receptacle here. And then there's another one behind that bread machine. So what should happen if all those outlets are protected by this GFCI? So once I trip this GFCI, those other outlets should not have power. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in this tester and then we're gonna see it light up on one of these receptacles. We're gonna trip the breaker on the GFCI and make sure that the power goes off to it. If it does, then it's considered downstream. All right, so I'm gonna plug in my tester and you can see it light up here, it's got power. So if I come over here to this GFCI and we test it, it'll trip this so you can see there's no power coming into this one. If we go back over here, you can see that the lights are off on this receptacle. You can also, we can plug this into this other one over here in the corner and you can see the same thing, there's no power. So if we go back over here and we reset it, then we come back over, you can see that it's got power again. So these two receptacles are protected by this one GFCI. So if there's any kind of an issue with either one of these with a ground fault, then this GFCI will protect it. Now, the reason I did that demonstration first is to illustrate a point. So that's gonna be the basic process we're gonna to use to figure this out at any location in our house. Now, you might be thinking, well, I don't have GFCIs installed everywhere, and that might actually be the reason why you're watching this video in the first place, is to install a GFCI and have it protect the other receptacles in your house. But it's gonna be the same process regardless. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our electrical panel, we're gonna cut the power off to the circuit, and then we're gonna come back up here and we're gonna do a little bit of work. Now, if you're not even sure what circuit breaker to flip off, then what you need to do is take your best guess, turn off the circuit breaker, and then go back to that area and see if that receptacle or that outlet still has power by plugging a device into it or plugging in a tester like I showed earlier. The other thing you can use is a tone probe tool. So you can plug a receiver in to one of your receptacles and then you can use this toner tool to figure out what breaker is on the panel. That can also shortcut the process, especially if you're working by yourself. Now that we've found the circuit breaker, we've turned it off and we're back in our room, let's go to the next step. Once you're sure power is off to a location, you'll want to remove one of the receptacles and then cap off the wires. The reason we're doing this is because we're going to have to take an educated guess as to which receptacle is the first one on a circuit. So we're going to have to remove a receptacle, we're gonna cap off the wires, and then we're gonna turn the power back on and see what other receptacles still don't have power or which ones are still powered on. Now you can shortcut this process of elimination a little bit by thinking about where your electrical panel is laid out in your house. So let's go to an example and think about if your electrical panel is on the north side of your house and the room that you're working in is on the south side of your house, well then it's probably going to be on the north wall because that's closest to that electrical panel. That's not always gonna be the case, but that's certainly where I would recommend starting. Now, if you remove a receptacle and that receptacle only has two wires coming into it, it doesn't have any wires going out of it, then that means you're at the end of a run. And so that's the exact opposite of where you wanna be. So if you remove a receptacle, you find there's only two wires in it, and say in our example, it's on the north wall, but you have another receptacle, right? And that has four wires, then that's probably gonna be the very first one that's coming into that room in that location that that circuit's powered off of. So that gives you a little bit of a shortcut into figuring out which receptacle is the first one, but you're still gonna have to go through this process of elimination to figure out for sure. Now, if you're only doing this to troubleshoot and you already have a GFCI in the room, then by far the easiest thing you can do is just, just simply hit that test button and cut off the power to the other receptacles that it's protecting. Especially if you're just trying to replace a receptacle or see if there's a loose wire, that's by far the easiest thing you'll need to do as opposed to going down to the breaker and shutting that off and going through that whole process of elimination. If you're doing this because you're installing a GFCI to protect the other receptacles in a room, then what you should do is make sure when you install that new GFCI receptacle to wire everything that's downstream from that to the load terminals on the GFCI. Now this is a brand new one. If you get a brand new one, it should have a sticker over the load terminals with some warnings 
So that's where you want to install the wires for everything else that's being powered from that location. Now this itself, the GFCI itself, the line terminals are used to have the power coming in from the panel, the line uh, into this. So that way all the power comes into this receptacle and it protects everything. If you don't wire this correctly, it's not gonna work properly and it's not gonna help you at all. So be sure to pay attention to which one is line versus load. And if you need any other help with that, I've got another video that you can check out here with that. I've also got another GFCI video too, depending on what you're doing. So you might wanna check that out as well. But otherwise I wanna say thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, be sure to give me a like and I will catch you in the next one.